my fellow forgiven sinners, grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Halloween is right around the corner. It's time when people like to scare and be scared. And really this gives us a good opportunity to talk about fear in the life of a Christian. In the scripture this sermon is based on, Numbers 13, we watch the Israelites as they are preparing to enter the promised land. There's a lot of fear in them. But Caleb stands up and says, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the people didn't believe him. They were too afraid. Then God punished that fear by not allowing that generation into the promised land of Canaan. Why would God punish that fear? Today in our sermon, we're, we're going to see, number one, the problem with our fears, the proper place for our fears, and number three, how God's promise affects our fear. So our first point, the, the problem with our fears, we're afraid of all kinds of things, aren't we? What's going to happen to our country? What if we end up in another world war? What if the terrorists win? Will I have enough for the future? Will I be able to escape this debt? What if we irreparably destroy our planet with all of this pollution? What if someone I love gets seriously ill or dies? The list goes on and on. And I haven't even mentioned the, the maybe perhaps lesser fears like public speaking, spiders, heights, and things like that. There is a lot to be afraid of in the world. So what's the problem? with being afraid of all those things. Those are really scary things. Well, the problem is that our fears easily and probably inevitably, our fears easily become idolatry. Think about what fear does for a moment. Fear makes us pay attention to something, right? If a lion is charging at me, it's probably not the best idea for me to just shrug it off. Fear makes us pay attention to something that needs our attention. It's valuable for that reason. But here's the problem. What happens when our earthly fears become more terrifying than God? The thing that is more terrifying will become more important. You see the problem? To fear something more than God is to make that thing more important than God. That's idolatry. We see a perfect example of this in Numbers 13. The Israelites had God's promise that they would conquer the land of Canaan, but because they were afraid, they didn't go into the land. They disobeyed God. Their fear, and again, this is an understandable fear, right? They were afraid to die in battle. That's, that's a pretty scary thought. But their fear led them to ignore God. In their fear, they said it would be better for us to die in the wilderness than to die in battle. And so God gave them what they preferred. That whole generation died in the desert. Fear can lead us to ignore what God says because we think that something else is more important right now. But that way of life has disastrous effects. This leads us to our second point. What is the proper place for fear? Throughout the Bible, there's a lot of talk about fearing God, and a lot of Christians really wonder about that. Why would we fear God? He's our Father. He's forgiven us our sins. He gives us heaven. Why would we fear God? Why would the Bible tell us to be so afraid of God? Well, the Bible tells us there's a very good reason to fear God. In Matthew 10, Jesus says, Be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. I suppose that is a good reason to fear God. I mean, life can get bad, don't get me wrong. People suffer things in life that are, are sometimes worse than how I imagine hell to be. But Jesus tells us that all of those things can only last, at most, a lifetime. Then you die. And that suffering is over. There is a lot for us to fear in life, but it cannot last forever. It cannot destroy our soul. God, on the other hand, if God is against us, he has the ability to give punishment that never ends. He has the power not just to destroy our bodies and minds, which the rest of the world can do, by the way, 
but God can also destroy our souls eternally in hell. Jesus tells us to fear God most of all because he, because that will make us pay attention to something that we would otherwise ignore. And we dare not ignore God. We have all the reason in the world to fear God. Think of all the things we, we fear more than God. All of those fears are idolatry. Just like the Israelites, those fears lead us into more sin and may even lead us, both us and the future generations, into a lot of pain and anguish, just like it did for the Israelites. It's a sin that pushes us away from God. And that brings us to our third point. We've seen the problem with our fear. It easily becomes idolatry. We've seen the proper place for fear. We should be terrified of God because of our sins from our fear. The sins that our fear leads us into, the sin that our fear often is itself when it turns into idolatry. Now we get to point number three, how God's promise affects our fear. As I was writing this, I kind of I felt like I was kicking someone when they're down to call fears sin. It's kind of like, like blaming the victim, right? Next time you're afraid of something, just try telling yourself that it's wrong to be so afraid and see if that actually takes any of your fears away, right? Fear is a feeling. It's not something that you just will away. To fear that God will damn us for our fear is only going to make us more afraid. And that will only give us more reason to be afraid, right? But that's kind of the point. You see, sin is not something that you and I just will away. Our very willpower is contaminated with sin. We stand before God with no excuses, no defense. We can only agree that God would be right if he judged us as guilty. If God judged us according to our sins and fears, we would have to accept our greatest fear, eternal damnation, as our destiny. But God judges us differently. He gives us a different fate. You see, Jesus faced our greatest fear. He was damned for us. God judged Jesus according to our sins and fears. God unleashed our greatest fear on Jesus. And because God declared Jesus guilty, for that reason, he declares you and me to be innocent. He gives us his promise that we have nothing to fear from God. You see, that's what Thomas and the other disciples realized when they saw those wounds of death on Jesus' risen body. They realized that all of their sins, all of their foolishness, all of their pride, and yes, all of their fears were forgiven in Christ. In Jesus, our greatest fear is conquered. And that, that greatest fear conquered, has a tremendous impact on all our other fears. Consider the, the terrifying things in life, the depths of human malevolence, the uncertainty of the future, the fact of our mortality, whatever it is. Do you think that problem, big as it may be, do you think that problem is more difficult for Jesus than earning your salvation was? Is that problem more difficult for Jesus than leaving behind his, his glory and power as God to become a human being? Do you think that problem is more difficult than Jesus suffering and dying on a cross and suffering hell in our place? If Jesus went through all that to conquer our greatest fear for us, then he will certainly keep his promise when he says, all these things will be given to you as well. This is what changed the apostles from cowards to courageous leaders. Jesus had conquered their greatest fear, and that gave them hope to face whatever life threw their way. We have that same hope. Whatever you are afraid of right now, remember that you have escaped hell. And you can look forward to heaven because of Jesus Christ. That is your hope for eternity and that is your hope for your fears today as well. Dear friends, we live in a scary world. 
but we have an even scarier God who has promised us that there is nothing to fear. Let's pray about that. Lord God, forgive us for using fear as an excuse to worship idols instead of you. Teach us to fear, trust, and love you above all else. Grant us the comfort and hope that only the gospel can give, so that even as we live in this sin-corrupted world with all of its fears, we might continue to have hope and courage in Jesus Christ. Amen. God's richest blessings on you until we meet again. And I say, I say, I say, it can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no, it wasn't easy, but be still and know.